Okay, everybody. So once again, I would like to wish you a good evening or good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are watching this from. My name is Natasha Exton and I'm the Head of Admissions at Prague College. Uh, we're delighted to be joined today by uh, a couple of our students and a uh, colleague Nelly from our student services team. And we are going to talk to you about the international student experience, what you can expect from Prague as a city and from Prague College by way of support if you are moving abroad uh, to study with us, which if you're listening tonight, then I assume that is your case. So um, just a couple of things before we get started. If you would like to share with us where you're uh, joining us from, it would be great to hear um, and read what countries you're from, uh, find out where you're listening to us today. So please feel free to um, put any questions either in the question and answer if you're watching this through the Zoom webinar, or if you're watching live on Facebook, then again, please use the chat there and we will try and get through um, all of your questions within the hour. So it's great to have you with us. Um, as I said, please do share where you're joining from. It's always great to, to hear uh, where our future students may be uh, listening from and with that we'll get started. So um, as I mentioned um, I am joined today by a couple of our students um, and colleague Nelly so I'd just like to hand over to them at this point to introduce themselves so you know uh, who you're going to be hearing from and talking to today. So perhaps we can start um, with you Nelly. Thank you Natasha. Hello everyone. Welcome to this webinar. It's very nice to see you even though we don't see you literally, but uh, it's good that you're here joining us. So my name is Nelly and I'm working um, as a head of student services. And um, I think I just have to mention that about like 15 years ago, I was uh, an international student coming to Prague to study at Prague College. So I kind of have my experiences as an international student coming to live in a different country with different culture and so on. So um, I think that really helped me to understand better what, what our students need or might want or how can we support them better. So I'm looking forward to talk to you today and tell you what kind of things we do for our students. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Genevieve. I'm from the States, um, from California, and I'm in the creative media production program here at Prague College. And I believe I moved, I guess it's almost, I've been here for almost two years now. Hi, my name is Arulan Reddy. Um, I'm from South Africa, and I'm studying international finance and business accounting, and I'm in my second year. Perfect, thank you. So you'll hear much more from Genevieve, Arulan and Nelly uh, later. I should say that um, you might be able to tell from my accent, but I'm originally from England. I did move to Prague uh, prior to Brexit. So uh, for anybody who's listening, who's from the EU, um, my experience would be very similar uh, to what yours would be uh, at a time when it was quite quite simple for, for Brits to move. Uh, but let's not dwell on that. That's not why we're here today. Um, but it does lead me quite nicely just to give you a very short uh, introduction, which as you might already know, uh, Prague College is offering British uh, degrees and diplomas awarded by uh, Teesside University if you complete one of our bachelor's or master's degrees. Um, and, you know, we like to think that uh, most of our students come to Prague College because they come for the outstanding education, uh, they want that British degree and diploma, and they come for the practical teaching uh, you know, the research and the background that our academics and professors can offer. But of course, you'll see there that there's two things highlighted in bold, which I believe is relevant to the uh, international student experience. And that is that all tuition is in English. Um, it's actually quite common for many of our students that English is their second language. So maybe for some of you listening today, you're also interested in how it is adapting um, into that English speaking environment, um, which perhaps is something that, that Nelly can touch upon, um, and also to be in an international environment. And that's not just within Prague College, but it's also within the city itself. But we do have um, students from over 80 different nationalities studying with us. So um, it truly is an opportunity to meet people from all over the world. But as I said, this is something that we think uh, attracts students 
to study with us. But of course, there is a student experience uh, that you gain from actually studying in the city of Prague. And at this point, I'd like to share with you, um, by way of an introduction, a very short video, which was captured uh, by some of our um, study abroad students who actually came over from uh, America. And this is just their take on the city of Prague. So it's only a minute long, so I'd like to share this with you now. Okay, so that was just a short video of their uh, experiences that I wanted to uh, share with you. As you could see from that uh, video, they covered a lot of the views, which is something that Prague uh, has to offer, uh, and some snapshots of the city itself, some of the food, but you could see there they, they were in a grocery store, which is, you know, if you move abroad, you do have to uh, fend and cater for your for yourself. So something to get to get used to, perhaps if you're not already, um, showed some of actually the art spaces and green spaces, which we'll talk about um, in a bit more detail later on as well. Uh, but perhaps at this point, um, I'm sure most of you that are listening today really want to hear from our students who have been through it. Um, you know, like I said, we've all actually moved um, to Prague from, from our home countries, but there are things that specifically when you are a student and perhaps if you're moving alone and you're leaving your network of um, friends and family that you have to go through um, when you move to a new city. So at this point, I'd really like to invite uh, Genevieve and Aralan to um, you know, discuss how they found moving and transitioning from their home um, towns to Prague. So please feel free to, uh, to start the conversation. Thank you, Natasha. Um, I'll go first, Genevieve, if that's fine with you. Um, I'll talk about culture shock. So coming from Africa, specifically South Africa, and moving to Europe, I did experience culture shock but it's very, very easy to adapt to. And I think that the whole support team at the university really makes it quite easy. But what was unique for me was the small differences that I experienced. Um, in Africa or South Africa rather, we don't really use a public transportation system, although it does exist. So when I moved to Prague, um, I had to learn how to use public transportation. And it sounds silly, but I used to drive everywhere. And I wasn't used to walking on the street. And uh, suddenly when I moved to Prague, I had to walk everywhere. I had to use trams and trains to get around. And it was actually what shocked me was the efficiency of it all and how no matter who you are or where you're from, everybody's using the public transportation system. So that was really nice for me. And then the other differences were like when I'm in the grocery store, for example, and I'll be shopping, uh, you'll notice that the tellers don't actually pack your groceries for you. So the first time I was in a grocery store, I was standing there and I'm like, okay, here's my bags. And nobody was packing my groceries. And it was such a confusing moment. And then I realized in South Africa, that is normal. But in Europe, that's not normal. So you can kind of adjust to these small little discrepancies. And um, I think no matter where you come from, uh, the culture shock really comes in play when you're not around, when you're not regularly around the same type of people, like from your culture, from your tradition. But it's very easy to make yourself feel at home and feel your, and make yourself feel um, less of an impact where culture shock is concerned. I mean, if you think about it, Prague has every type of restaurant you could find. There's American bars, there's, um, there's a lot of Indian places, which I go to as well. And that kind of helped me to settle in and adjust. 
And then also when you're around so many people at Prague College and it's such an international community, you find yourself, you know, after you settle in, maybe after a month or two, you find yourself wanting to learn about those around you and you focus much less on what isn't around you anymore, you know? So that was my experience. Um, just to add on to what you said, Arlon, uh, with the with the transportation, it was the exact same for me. You know, I drove everywhere, you know, even if it was the grocery store was a block or two away, it was like, why would I walk there, you know, and I just would take the car. And, um, you know, the city that I'm from also like there was just, you know, the bus system was about like as close as we got to a public transportation system, but it really uh, wasn't great. Um, so adapting to the transportation system here has actually been like, amazing. Um, it's so easy to get everywhere. Um, and I actually really enjoy like reading on the trams and the metros and actually walking to more places. Um, I actually think that I, when I first um, moved, I really think I got to know more of the city just from walking around everywhere. Um, so walking around is just really great. You run into um, like little unique spots all over and you can just explore that way. Um, I think in terms of culture shock, there's definitely, you know, like some weird things, like everywhere is just gonna have these little differences. Um, but, uh, you know, for me, when I got here, I just really felt welcomed by the city and I just felt at home and it was a really warm, nice feeling. And um, actually it was at the, yeah, the welcome week was really, really great for me. I actually made some friends um, at the welcome week that I was very, very close with um, for like, yeah, that's, that I still am close with. Um, so that is really helpful. Um, I think, yeah, the city in general just really has a lot to offer, um, you know, and, but I do think that um, even when, when I first moved, I had, I mean, my Czech was really, really bad, but I do think learning Czech is really important. Um, it makes you feel more at home and more like a part of the culture and community. Um, and it just shows that you, you know, you care. I think that also with relation to making new friends, Prague College and the programs that they offer make it so easy to make friends. And really where a lot of my friends came from was the student council. So once I joined up as a um, student council treasurer, I was able to network with the student body on a different level. And through that networking, I found common ground with everybody who I worked with. And that's one way to expand your network. And you really need to get involved. You need to join societies. You need to attend the events um, that Prague College frequently runs. So we'll have like a Christmas party or like um, all these different events that we can have. And uh, that's one way you just, you have to be outgoing. You have to network with those around you. And if you are struggling at some point, you feel like you're struggling. Um, Student services is always there and they always step in and they're like a huge support base for every single student at Prague College. I think I've come to them with so many problems. I think Nelly's probably had enough of me <laughs> in, the, in the year and a bit that I've been there. And um, it's also so easy because you'll find that if you're staying at the student accommodation, which I think Natasha will talk about a bit later, um, it's really hard to be living in a student accommodation and be in a kitchen that you're sharing with people and not talking to them. So when you walk into the kitchen or any common area, you will interact with people and it's so easy to make friends. You just literally have to be yourself and just introduce yourself and it all works. Thank you guys, that's some really, um good insights actually and it just goes to show that yeah what you're accustomed to um and what perhaps can surprise you isn't what you expect so you know we obviously students that come to us they have done their research you know they they know a little bit about what to expect but um there's those day-to-day -day experiences that you perhaps can't uh, plan for let's say and you just have to adjust and live through it and get an understanding of what your new surroundings are and the other thing I wanted to pick up on which I'm sure um I'm going to hand over to Nelly in a moment. We'll uh, second is that it's quite normal to um, 
have ups and downs. You can move and still love the city, but you know, homesickness is something that affects people in in all different ways. And you know, it, it's not to be too hard on yourself if you do have a bad day. And obviously, with um, you know, technology, which due to the current circumstances we're all using so much, um, you can kind of keep in touch with that network. But I think the advice to you know really get involved as much as you can and um, is great advice because that will help you to settle in. And perhaps at this point, um. I will pass over to uh, Nelly to perhaps cover a little bit about uh, how we help and expand on some of the things that um, Aralan and Genevieve have uh, just touched upon already as well. Yeah, thank you, Natasha. And thank you, Arulan and Genevieve. It's so nice to hear we we managed to, to help you. And Arulan, you can always, you know, come back to us. You are definitely not tired of helping you out. So, um, so what we are, the students mentioned some things and that which was actually our focus and is our focus in the student services. And one of them is specifically when we talk about international students and understanding their background and the transition that they have to go through, you know, not only that um, students change from high schools typically like, you know, to university level where it's by itself it's challenging, but then they go to a different country and they speak different language. They don't understand the language around, like, uh, around them. And that's really, and they're alone and their friends and families are not with them. So we completely, we're trying to, you know, just kind of to, to imagine that or feel that and see how can we help. And so um, our main approach is, I guess, is to, support students in um, kind of uh, finding friends around or feeling comfortable because we understand that this loneliness and you know just when they come and they're just alone that that's one of the things that leads to that maybe bigger problems in settling down in kind of getting accustomed and they just starting to close down the students they just don't you know they're not so open-minded or as Arulan said like you know proactively ser searching for things so first idea is we're trying to get the students familiar with Prague College with the community and that's even before they actually came to Prague Right, so we typically we're taking students over from a kind from kind hands of admissions team, you know, from admissions advisors, and then it's kind of I think approximately eight weeks or eight to six weeks before semester starts or before the welcome week, we start actively communicating to students, talking about things that they need to know they might need for their studies for their first weeks or first month months, which is the most critical time you know for each um, of our students so we talk about you know um, what to expect what's around pra college what's pra college community <clears throat> what pra college community is and things like that yeah so that's happening through um, by emails we um, also run now some digital events and not only for students but also for parents and kind of helping parents to see uh, the environment their kids are going to and uh, so things like that then we have one week before semester starts we have welcome week and the welcome week uh, we typically run so pre-covid times students we arrive in we we're welcoming them to Prague College we were showing them um, all all our campuses we introducing them to um, staff teachers and uh, other students we also, I think already around five years ago or four years ago, we've um, decided to drop this orientation, which will be just like information given like slides and presentation, but we've chosen a different approach, which we kind of focus on um, getting students to interact between each other. Because definitely like as Genevieve mentioned, during this, a welcome week and particularly during the orientation you know if they can if the students can find someone who kind of you know think the same feel the same or kind of you know can can hold the hand just in case of you know the moment of loneliness that's already a big victory this is that's what we are trying to do so um during welcome week we're trying to 
create those bonds between students. Yeah. Um, so in the digital, so in COVID, during the COVID time, so the past two semesters, we welcome students digitally, virtually, and we are trying very hard to think of all type of activities even though they are online, which will anyway try to put students together in some smaller groups, they can do some activities, they can still try to find some connection with uh, another student. So that's welcome week. And then of course, during the studies, uh, we were just always there. We are study advisors. Uh, every single student at Prague College has a Sorry, Natasha, you see, I'm a little bit jumping right all over the place. <laughs> Sorry. No problem, no problem. Yeah, so, but I'll just, since I started, I just, during the studies, we, um, we assign a study advisor to each student. A study advisor is a person who will always there, will be always there to talk to students about the studies, about some, uh, you know, life issues, um, um, give advice just listen to students, so that's that type of things. And um, um, and just typically also a student can come to any one of us. There is a team of three people in student services. Uh, so we're always there uh, waiting for students. Um, and I think that other, should I, Natasha, go ahead and just talk about this support mechanism, right? Like, yeah, yeah, please do, Nelly. Mm -hmm. We can yeah. jump back. Mm -hmm. I'll just, <laughs> yeah, so, and then uh, we try also to organize uh, different types of uh, activities for students, as Arlan mentioned. Of course, it's uh, parties, different types of parties, events. Um, but also, we have a certain uh, student uh, so, um, associations which are meant to kind of be closer to the students, right? Of course, we are there, but we administration, you know, and all these things. So we have student council, uh, which works very close with the student body, with the whole uh, student community. We also have um, International Student Association, which to be honest is less active nowadays, but that's just because international students are actually majority back home like in their home countries so international student association was meant to kind of you know ex provide this exact support to the international students who are who just traveled to Prague it's their first time in the Czech Republic or you know they are very new and we were doing lots of uh, interesting events and activities with the international students um, we also do have student societies and that's basically society clubs of interest we have uh, very active music society uh, we have gaming society or used to have running society where we could <laughs> when the time during the times we could run together so things like that and actually we are asking students if they have any interest uh, in opening a society they can it's, e it's just as easy as to find another three to five students the same who share the same interest and then um, a new student society can be created um, other support mechanism that we have that, um, and particularly me doing that, it's visa support. So for all international students who then travel to Czech Republic who have visas, then I'm helping them to uh, extend those visas or, you know, deal with uh, all visa related things. Yeah, I just wanted to say really briefly that um, Nelly has like personally helped me with, I think every time I've had to do anything for a visa, and um, I, I hate having to do stuff for visas. I hate paperwork, but like without the support, it would just never, I would never be able to do it. It's like too much for my mind to handle, but it, like the school actually does make this really, really easy. Um, and, I, and I think uh, when I was, before I even came to Prague, um, the school helped me. Yeah, I think Nellie helped me even before I met her um, when I was still in California. She helped me do my visa um, originally to come, and that was super simple. So yeah, thank you, Nelly. <laughs> thank you, Nelly. Yeah, that's nice to hear. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I'm trying my best to help students <laughs> with all this boring, and I know, I know that's not um, the most exciting stuff to deal with. 
And just the, I suppose the last thing uh, okay, I can see here, the Czech language assistance. So we, one of um, team member in student services is a native Czech speaker. I also speak Czech. Um, so I can help with that as well. But, you know, whenever any kind of translation, like simple, you know, like uh, to, to read the contract, the accommodation contract before the student moves in into the new apartment, we'll do that or, you know, we create all kind of confirmation of studies in Czech language and just, you know, if, if, if a student needs to communicate to someone in Czech, then they can ask us and we'll represent them. And th the last but not least is um, something we um, specifically in the COVID time we are focusing on a lot, and that is well being support of students. Because um, obviously the times the time is hard now and students are facing different challenges and uh, some issues like to wor working with anxiety and depressions and all kinds of things that, that all normal which can happen but now maybe they're just quite um, strong so we have Oh, my colleague from the student services department, Philip, he is a meditation instructor, uh, qualified, so he is offering meditation club every week. Um, we also have a yoga classes every week, uh, this time is with me, and uh, oh, we also work with the city practice, which is our uh, long term, like, partner, um, the um, a company provides counseling services for our students. It's external, this is anonymous, and students are um, very welcome there to go and share and talk to professionals, you know, to professional counselors. So I think that's been, um, it, we got very good feedback from the students uh, on this service. So I was like, I think I will stop now because I think I'm just like two slides in a row. Sorry, Natasha. No. <laughs> No, thank you, Nelly. I think um, it highlights things which I'm sure for those listening are very um, important aspects and um, are aspects that, of course, of student life that we take uh, very seriously. And I think as has hopefully been outlined, um, you know, it, it's quite normal. A large proportion of our student body are moving from abroad. So please don't feel like you're the only one or you're not you know we're not you're not sure what to expect like as you've just heard um we're very very much prepared to welcome you um you know we understand as far as possibly as far as possible the challenges that you might face um and have put in place kind of mechanisms to support you um in that transition so i do just want to um jump back uh a little bit and uh, just touch on a couple of things that were mentioned which is um one about the, the Czech language. Um, so as you heard, there is support in student services uh, for this. Genevieve, congratulations for continuing with uh, uh, with classes. Uh, I have to say, um, I, I don't speak Czech. I've lived uh, here now for um, almost five years. Um, if you can kind of learn some basic phrases and enough to get by, um, you know, I, I personally find that um, that's enough for me to be able to um, integrate. But of course, if it's something that you're uh, looking to do, then we do offer classes through Prague College. Um, but I certainly would say that, you know, Prague is becoming a more and more international city um, and we'll talk a bit more about like what Prague has to offer as well. So um, we are going to hear from our students again. Um, and I just wanted to uh, briefly come to student accommodation because we know from work working with uh, students that this is obviously uh, a big consideration. You want to know where you might be living. Um, now, typically what we find is that students who are coming from the EU uh, tend to prefer to find their own uh, apartments and they're very much welcome to do that. Um, for students who are, um, do require visa assistance, we do typically recommend that when you first move, you move into one of the student residences that we cooperate with. This is because you will need a confirmation of where you are living uh, to be able to apply for your long term visa. Um, and these student residences are very accustomed to doing that. Um, and we can provide that documentation to you. And we know that it will be accepted uh, at the Czech embassy when you go to apply um, for your long term visa. So that's why in the first instance, we recommend to stay in a student residence. Um, you heard about Aroland mentioning sort of shared kitchens and I'll invite the um, invite Genevieve and Aroland to 
tell you a bit about their experiences, but you can just see on the screen here um, some of the rough prices in euros. Typically um, in the residences, particularly in Student House Bottich, which is the main provider we work with and where quite a lot of Prague college students do live, um, it's twin rooms with a bathroom shared between you and your roommate, or they offer slightly cheaper rooms where the bathroom is shared between four people. They do have some single rooms, but they're quite limited. Um, Zytrum, the other provider you can see there, do offer uh, single rooms as well. And then there are there's another new provider called The Fizz, which also offers um, some single rooms. And then Student Room Flat is a platform where um, you can kind of put in your budget or put in the number of rooms that you're looking for, and it will kind of throw up different options for you. Uh, they do also provide um, confirmation of accommodation, but they work directly with the landlords. So um, it's it's a really good option sort of once you are here and it might help you to find something even beforehand, but we would really typically recommend one of those sort of top two providers. And um, something else I would just kind of recommend is to perhaps consider particularly uh, in these times uh, right now um, around what kind of cancellation or like breaking the contract um, is like what the notice period is as well. Um, because you do want to make sure, you know, if you get there and you would prefer to move that you can, that you're able to do that kind of without losing your deposit. So it's just worth reading through um, the contracts as well. But if you do um, apply to study with us or you've already applied, then you can indicate within the application form if you want to live in one of the residences we cooperate with or if you'll be finding your own accommodation and as mentioned if you do require a visa um, typically we would ask that you do uh, stay in one of the residences we cooperate with and uh, typically this would be student house uh, bottage so uh, that's just to note there so perhaps um, Aralan and Genevieve you might want to uh, say about your experience I know Genevieve you stayed in student house bottage so perhaps I can invite you to start off um, yes, so uh, yeah, so for Student Hub Botich or Botich, um, uh, yeah, I think the one really good thing is that it's just super simple um, to get, you know, your room sorted with them online. And then, you know, because I'm coming from the States, I, I needed this for my visa. I needed to have the agreement um, in order to get the visa. Um, it's in uh, actually a really cool area. There's some really nice parks and some really nice bars and restaurants around. So I really, I still actually go to that um, area quite often. I was actually only living there for like two or three weeks because um, yeah, before I, before moving to Prague, um, all I wanted was to share a room with someone and have like that dorm life experience. Um, and as soon as I was living it, um, I realized I needed my own space and I couldn't live with someone in the same room. Um, and that was just, that's just me. Um, it really depends on the kind of person you are, like how much space like you need for your, um, for your own well-being. Um, so I moved out of there, but um, I remember I had to pay like some kind of fee. There's some, you need to, yeah, you need to read the contract over because what I recall is there's like a month or two that you need to give them like an advance for when you're leaving. Um, but I can't quite recall the details. Um, I would say, uh, yeah, student room flat, like even if you are from, if you do need a visa, it's kind of a bit more risky. I mean, it still, I think is not a better option than just, you know, finding a flat on Facebook before you've moved if you need a visa because um, you know, once you're here, you can find flats really easily. Um, but if you're requiring a visa, I think honestly, it is best to do um, to do yeah what what's recommended. Um, and I do think um, yeah, if I could have done it over, I would have just applied to get um, single room. But of course, I couldn't have known that at the time. Um, and so yeah, now I'm living in um, in a flat, and I've had a few different flats since being here. Um, I find the moving to moving process like it, it kind of depends on how much stuff you have but for me I've moved around quite a lot um, and it's actually really easy to find flats when you're here so even if you do um, start out in a student house it's actually quite easy to move to move out 
Yeah, I think what I would add on that is what's most common is that students spend their first semester most typically um, in the residence. And then once they've kind of settled into the city and perhaps know the area that they like and have met um, you know, friends that they might want to live with, then they might go into kind of an apartment and um, sharing. But as Genevieve says, the, the accommodation in the student residence is um, it's it's very modern and um, it's well equipped. It's newly renovated. The location is great, but of course, um, you know, it is worth considering what environment you're going to be comfortable with. But normally, um, students stay for one semester. Which, Arulan, perhaps at this point, you can kind of comment on what your experience of sort of student living in Prague has been. Uh, sure. Okay. So I lived at uh, Zetrum. Um, general kind of experience or. So opinion amongst the student body is that people like Zaytrim more than they like uh, Vertage, but, um, you know, it's really up to, to what your budget allows and where you want to live. But um, Zaytrim was really wonderful. The facilities were really good, which I was impressed with, with Zaytrim. And um, when I went in, one of the things I needed to insist on was that I had my own uh, bathroom because I hate sharing a bathroom with anybody and uh, it wasn't going to happen. So <laughs> that's what I managed to get. And that I think that really alleviated a lot of the stress, you know, of just being a student and in the dormitories and stuff. Having your own bathroom is like heaven, you know. And, uh, so um, that was a big, quite a big deal for me. I was quite happy there. And then, um, you know, with COVID and everything, and uh, I really felt like I needed my own space. I wasn't comfortable in the dorms anymore which, you know, as, I, as uh, Genevieve was saying, it's case by case basis. It depends on who you are. And then um, I found my own place and I moved, which was really, really smooth. And um, you just have to find the right landlord if you are gonna move. And once you find the right landlord, everything goes so well. And uh, my suggestion to all students really, even if you're from the EU, America, anywhere, is that you start off in the dorms because if you don't start off in the dorms, you have to remember if you're looking to assimilate within the student body and make friends, you are immediately secluding yourself. So if you want the highest chance of success, start off in the dorms. It humbles you, it teaches you about sharing, being in each other's space, and it also helps you to make friends. And then once you've established a friend group and you're a little bit more comfortable with the city, then you can now kind of move out and try and be on your own. And um, what's really important is that living at the student accommodations, it means that the receptionists, the security guys, they all speak English, which means that you instantly have people to guide you around the neighborhood. Whereas when you're on your own instantly, you kind of have to figure it out from, from scratch. Whereas you can, you can use that network around you. So that, that would be my suggestion. Thank you. I think that's really good advice, actually, and it is, is worth noting that, yeah, the, the reception teams, um, you know, at 24 hours, so there is that support. So just for reassurance, if you're new to the city, um, you know, you you can count on your residents um, when you first arrive. So thank you very much for that um, insight and input. So we've already covered what student support and well-being um, Park College uh, sorry, what student support Park College can provide um, for students' well-being. So at this point, um, you know, you've kind of heard quite a lot about what the experience maybe you can expect, but perhaps we want to concentrate for some time on why Prague? What does Prague offer um, by way of an international student experience that perhaps um, other cities don't, uh, and some of the advantages of living here. So I think we'll all kind of um, cover this one. We all sort of have different um, experiences. Um, you know, like I said before, I'm I'm from the UK. Um, if you want to go abroad, you basically have to fly. So for me, one of the really big advantages of why I wanted to move was to be able to travel and to see more of Central Europe. And um, you know, you're within kind of a train ride, a bus ride that's very very affordable. Um, to different countries all around you and even cities within the Czech Republic. There is, uh, if you kind of like walk in and nature, there's a lot you can do in that regard. There's lots of different cultural events um, that you can get involved with. And, you know, Berlin, Vienna, other large sort of capital cities are, as I say, only about kind of four hours away. So depending on where you're from, 
uh, you know, distance is also quite subjective. So, um, you know, the lengths that I'm kind of willing to travel like in a day or um, over a weekend have definitely extended since living in Prague. But for some of our students that are from much bigger countries, you know, for them kind of a, a, a two or four hour sort of train or bus ride doesn't feel like any time at all. So of course it's all relative. Um, but I would say like for, for me personally being really in, you know, it, it says they're the heart of Europe, but um, really Prague is such a good um, base to sort of have the freedom to do that. So um, yeah, that was that was one of my main motivations for wanting to move as well. But I'll, I'll invite our, our students who obviously move for study to, to maybe comment further on some of those other things and what attracted them to Prague. Um, yeah, when I was, so I was originally just looking for some um, universities um, in Europe that would be um, more, you know, cost effective than um, than in the States. And, you know, I was looking for a couple, I don't know, a couple weeks or something and really just trying to research. And, um, you know, I was looking, you know, for the criteria of the right budget um, in English uh, and the right field of study. And, um, and then all of a sudden, actually, like, a few schools popped up in Prague um, and Prague College was one of them. And then after um, applying, I was actually admitted to a couple universities here. And then, yeah, based off of the interview that I had actually with um, one of my professors, I just, I knew that um, I wanted to go to Prague College. Um, and uh, I kind of just, you know, moved here. I didn't know anyone. Um, I was alone. I didn't know what the city was really like. Um, so there wasn't really, it wasn't so much drawn from the city, but rather from the school. Um, but now that I'm here, I think Prague is honestly kind of like the perfect uh, European city. It's it's small enough so that you feel like it's one, you know, bunch of different communities and you feel like everything's kind of connected. You know, when you're walking around, like you um, will bump into like people that you know, just on the streets. Um, it's really common to, you know, just see, um, the same faces like again and again um and then uh and then it's it's big enough so that there's something always going on like there is just always something to do um you know infinite places to explore i do think it's super super international which is really cool um and um one thing actually i, I wanted to say earlier um is that uh, the small the small class sizes is actually uh, a huge oh hi <laughs> sorry actually um, a huge benefit because I, I haven't been involved with any um, clubs as of yet um, but for me uh, you know all of my classes have really felt like a little family um, whether they're your, like closest friends or not everyone is just there for each other and you know makes you feel super included which i love um i do think there's a lot of opportunities that the school does provide like in terms of internships there's um a career board that where all the students have access to and when there's new opportunities that pop up um uh the school will post them and then the students can get involved there um i yeah i just think that the city overall um I haven't met anyone as of yet that's come here and is living here that doesn't like the city. Um, and everyone who's visited me here um, really just falls in love with it too, which is really, really great. Uh, just to add on to what uh, Genevieve said, um, living in the heart of Europe is really a huge plus. It is so cheap to travel to any visit to any bordering country anywhere in Europe, which is really nice. Um, cost of living is one of the lowest in Europe, which I think is a real plus for most students because you can live a higher quality of life if you, you choose your country right. And I think that was really important for me as well is I didn't want to quite literally go to an expensive country and be broke you know, because that is the reality. If I was in the US or, or in the UK, it would be a struggle. But here I'm very comfortable. I have no issues. Um, it's very international. I mean, I live in the city center, so there's a lot of international people around me. 
and that kind of makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, the art in Prague, so exhibitions, galleries, film studios is to die for. It is so cultural. When I first moved to Prague, I got invited to the National Gallery opening and I went there and I saw their whole, they opened a new section of the gallery, which was like all of this Asian art and um, all of these uh, artifacts from China, Japan, Korea, and just to see the different type of of art that they had in this in in and National Gallery was amazing, and there were floors and floors of art, and I could only get to through like maybe three floors in like four hours, and then I was done. But <laughs> it was amazing, and as far as career opportunities go, I really don't feel worried because I will be graduating next year, just in over a year's time. And um, Prague College and the team are really, really proactive in finding students job placements and assisting students. And I think what's worth mentioning is that there are add-ons that the university does. There are CV courses, there are um, recruitment courses. The university encourages us to build soft and hard skills. And um, it explains from day one that you need to have simple things like a LinkedIn profile which can help you to be more visible in the job environment. It teaches us how to build CVs. There's literally a dedicated course in your first year. I think, well, as a business student, it must have been different for me. But in my first year, there was a dedicated course about CV building, HR management, and recruitment. And suddenly, I really liked that aspect of my course because it put me inside the mind of a recruiter at a major company. So I know what they're looking for, and I know how to... Um, get that across on my CV. And I think those are really, really important things. Just those attention to details with career opportunities is what I feel will give me a boost in the next year or so. And then um, Prague College campus is so central. I live like three minutes away from the campus. So I literally just walk across the square and the campus is right there and it's central to everything. So the campus has a square, which is just in front of the campus, there's a square, which is right next to the metro and the tram station. And there's a whole bunch of cafes and stores in the area. So the, just the location of the campus is absolutely wonderful. Yeah, the, the location, I study at the, the main one. You study at the Vinohrady one? Yeah, I'm at yeah, yeah. yeah, the Polska campus. Yeah, so I'm at that one as well. I have been to... Uh, the other campus, I can't remember the street, which is also really nice. Um, and yeah, it is in just a great area, super central, lots of nice places around, a huge park behind it that's gorgeous. It has such a great view of the city. Um, and I did just want to say also that the one thing about the city itself is that um, uh, in when I was living in California, I was someone that would always like uh, be like looking over my shoulder, like walking down the street and walking quite fast at night. I haven't done like as soon as I moved here, one of my first thoughts was that uh, it's just super, super safe. Um, I don't think I've had any, um, you know, experiences where I felt unsafe. Um, and that's super, super important to me. Um, so I actually do feel safer here than in my hometown, which is awesome. Um, and especially the um, the, where the campus is, um, that's a super, super, um, safe part of, of Prague as well. Thank you both. Yeah, I think, um, I think you've covered the sort of the city and again, some of those key points, um, really nicely. So I, I am mindful of time at this point, and I do want to make sure that we can, um, answer any questions that um, people watching either on Facebook or through the webinar um, can ask and we can get to. So um, I just want to mention at this point that we've touched on a couple of things today and that our videos on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. So including um, a quick kind of fly through campus tour of the Polska location that um, Arulan and Genevieve have uh, referenced. And we do also have an art and design studio uh, in Bishop's Court, which is in Prague One, so very central, and um, in an up and coming art district called Pragovka, if you are looking at either the MA Fine Art or Future Design, those um, programs are, are based out of there. So um, please do feel free if you'd like to kind of have that campus tour to go to those channels. But at this point, um, I do want to make sure that we cover um, 
the remaining things to get through, which uh, importantly is around uh, how we will be teaching for September. For those of you who are joining us, um, you know, and you've you've heard all about this great international student experience, but obviously, um, you know, if you are moving to Prague, we do acknowledge um, that the times are, are more challenging than they've been in the past for obvious reasons. Um, and what you see on the screen now should be inspirational events and speakers. And the reason I highlight this um, is because all these activities are some of the things that you've heard about um, student council, you know, we also have a visiting artists and lecture series and uh, talks from uh, either what previously was from people that were perhaps uh, able to visit on campus. But we, with the pandemic, we've obviously opened up a lot of our activities um, to be virtual, which has meant that we can invite speakers uh, from all around the world. So we've had guest speakers from Australia, uh, from America. And, you know, this is something that we'll continue to do because obviously that um, adds value for our students but as you've heard Prague is a very international city so there's many people from all different walks of life uh, living here and we try and invite them in to offer their experience um, as well so just what you can see here is some of the things that uh, Prague College provides and in, um, including as well a digital career fair which um, you know Arulan mentioned sort of about the opportunities and um, that are on offer and this is something that's there for all students as well and Prague does enjoy um, you know one of the lowest unemployment rates in Europe as well so if you are wanting to kind of complement your studies uh, with work it's, it's a good city to to be in um, but at this point as I mentioned um, for those of you watching who are looking at um, studies for September 2021. I'd just like to briefly spend um, some time about how we are planning to teach now. It was referenced about our small class sizes. So um, if it's feasible at the time, uh, we are planning for face-to-face -face teaching across our programs. Um, but because we do have class sizes in School of Art and Design are around um, sort of 12 to 14 people maximum, uh, creative media production is actually something similar. Uh, as well uh, within business kind of up to 20 uh, students perhaps but the spaces that you will be taught in um, and in the case or eventuality that some students uh, might not be able to get here obviously we do fully expect that um, social distancing and uh, being able to maintain that throughout the campus will definitely be feasible the art and design studios are kind of open plan and open spaces so again um, it's possible to kind of keep that space, uh, keep ventilation throughout the campuses. And as mentioned, we have small class sizes anyway, so we don't envisage um, any sort of issues in that regard. Now, of course, um, for some of you listening, you might require um, a visa to study with us. Um, if you do encounter delays to being able to do that uh, sort of on time and it prevents your arrival for the start of the semester which will be the 27th of September with welcome week taking place the week prior to that then you can be assured that you will still be able to start your program with participation through our digital campus um, we have been running um, all classes this semester uh, through the digital campus and again if you want to kind of hear about some of our student experiences of that uh, we did host a Sort of student takeover open day uh, specifically talking about what it's like to study in that environment and um, you know some of our programs are very practical but the students talk about um how sort of project work's been managed how they've still been able to uh, meet people you've kind of heard about our welcome parties i just touched upon some of our guest speakers you know all those activities have still been ongoing um and we've still had sort of excellent participation rates and our students are still sort of settled in and with that support from Nelly and her team. Um, you know, we've been delighted to see how well our students have been succeeding on their programs. So if you do want to kind of hear more about what that might be like, um, I do recommend you to kind of check out those videos. And what that essentially means is that, um, you know, if you are either from the EU and you move here, we also obviously have some students uh, join us who are already based in Prague or from the Czech Republic. Um, then we can run classes um, in a hybrid format. So what that would mean is some students would be participating uh, on campus and some would still be uh, participating through the digital campus. And we have invested in the technology to make that possible. Um, and, you know, we are fully sort of prepared to do that to make sure that students, like I say, who who may still experience delays, uh, in any capacity can still join their programs um, and are very much a part of our community. And uh, I touched upon it before, but actually all students 
whether physically present in Prague uh, or taking part digitally at some of our events. And indeed, there might be some teaching that you know does still happen um, completely remotely because we do have a lot of uh, guest speakers, for example, um, that take part in some of our programs. So you know it's also an opportunity to actually kind of expand the learning experience. So if you would like more information, we have a dedicated um, page on our website for um, 20, September 2021 applicants. So please uh, do visit there if you're not familiar with it. And of course, um, you can get in touch with the admissions team. So um, I believe the next slides are around deadlines. So we do have um, a couple of admission deadlines upcoming. Now, um, you can see the associated benefits there. And again, these are available on our website. Similarly for non-visa, you can see sort of the deadlines and associated benefits. Um, as I say, I do just want to um, touch upon sort of what the next steps would be. So if you've got any questions for us, like I said, please uh, start writing those in the chat now. We will um, make sure that we check those out and answer those that we can. But if you are listening and you think that the city of Prague and indeed Prague College is the right place for you, then of course you would apply to your chosen program. The application process is all online. For all our programs, we have a final interview that is at the moment um, taking place over Zoom. You would then uh, hopefully be successful after that final interview and uh, be offered a place to study and accept that. Uh, confirm your place with payment of the first semester tuition fees. Uh, we would then give you more information about the visa uh, application and as and when it's possible for you to apply for your visa, um, you would do so. And then of course, uh, arrive in Prague. And as you can see there, uh, if feasible, you would be starting in person. Of course, that's dependent on the situation at the time uh, or in a digital campus. And there's the link um, to that website. And if you are watching this, uh, I'm going to put this next slide up so you can see our email, admissions at proudcollege.cz. Uh, if you would like a copy of these um, slides or to get to some of those videos that we showed you, um, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us uh, and we'd be happy to share them and happy to help. So uh, I'll just leave that up for a moment. But at this point, um, I do want to make sure, like I mentioned, that we can answer your questions. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen at this point and let's see uh let's see who's been joining us and what questions we have okay um so i can see we have some people actually from seattle from ukraine this is exciting um very nice thank you for being here with us and there's a question about um admission of non-traditional students um i assume what that question means is perhaps um somebody that does not have a completed qualification um, or is in a specific situation. But actually what I would recommend on that is to get in touch with us on admissions to let us know the program that you're most interested in um, applying for, what your background is, um, and we can advise you individually. In fact, how we work as an admissions team anyway is that um, a bit similar to, as Nelly mentioned, for the study advisors, if you get in touch with us, you will have your own personal admissions advisor and they will work with you and answer any questions right through from, um, you know, about the program. Uh, it could be about, yeah, how to apply for the visa, uh, fees, whatever question you have, we're basically here to help. And we can have individual calls with you too. Um, and of course, as part of that process, we would be happy to um, advise you around which program might be the best fit for your qualifications. We offer qualifications right through from foundation level, uh, bachelor's right up until master's level. And uh, perhaps what's interesting to note as well is that you know students move abroad at all different points in that journey. So some come from foundation with us and they study the foundation of Prague College, the bachelor's degree, and then their master's degree. Whereas some you know might have done their bachelor's in their home country and come just for master's. So, um, you know, it's it really is uh, mixed, but in terms of that particular question, I think my my advice really would be to get in touch with us and tell us more about your educational background, so we can make sure we give you the right advice. But whilst we do have our students and Nelly here, um, is there anything else that we can that we can help you with that you'd like to know, or perhaps are there any sort of um, any closing comments? Okay, no, I think we do have another uh, question that comes in. 
Yes, so this is about the visa process and we've not gone into too much detail um, at this time. We typically do go through the documents that you would need in our uh, general uh, open day presentation, sort of welcome to Park College. So the visa um, application process can take around, well, the application itself can take um, anywhere between three to four months to be processed from the time that you submit your application. So this does not account for the time to kind of get your documents prepared and make sure they're translated and in the appropriate format for submission at the embassy. So we do usually recommend that students um, are aware of the documentation that they'll need so they can start to research you know how you'll get that from your home country. We have applicants, for example, who um, you know their citizenship might be from one country, but they reside in another. So the things like if you need a criminal background check, you have to get that from both countries. So these things can take time, um, which is why we do advise you to sort of start that research early. But the actual application itself, once you've submitted it, um, it can be quicker than ninety days. But typically it's around the three month mark for it to be processed and in rare cases uh, it can take up to four months. In terms of um, potential issues for delays, um, at the moment these are in regard to the uh, pandemic. So there are currently measures in place um, from the Czech authorities um, which are currently um, preventing the submission of new visa applications um, at local Czech embassies for the type of visa that Prague College is um, supporting. So uh, for that reason, we would normally for the September semester recommend that students submit their application in um, May time or in the month of June. So that's still a couple of months away from now. Um, you know, things are improving in terms of the epidemiological situation. But as of now, we just don't have a time frame um, for when certain measures might change. Um, and this is why, as I mentioned before, we are definitely planning for face-to-face uh, -face teaching to happen, but we're also preparing for the fact that um, some of our students may or may not be able to get here because the, the preparation process for the visa application, um, it can actually really vary from individual to individual based on sort of the country and just based on how easy it is to go through those um, administrative processes. So I hope that answers that question, but again, um, do get in touch with us um, on admissions at parkcollege.cz to tell us you know where you'd be applying from um, and we can kind of tell you what's sort of the average time frame uh, for students applying from that country we're definitely happy to help you in the admissions team on that are there any other questions before we uh, head out to leave you guys. I, I'm aware that we've come up to the hour mark now. So thank you so much for uh, staying with us. It, it's been a lovely sort of evening in, in Prague. So if it's been nice where you are, we're very grateful for you for taking the time, uh, taking the time to out of your evening or out of your day to, to be with us and, and hear about this international student experience. And I would really like to thank Nelly, Genevieve and Arulan for your insights. And um, yeah, they've been, been really valuable. Um, and I hope that you as the listeners uh, have enjoyed hearing what, what we've had to say. And we'll of course uh, consider Prague as your future study destination. Okay, well, if there's no further questions at this point, uh, thanks once again for listening and uh, taking part. And if you do need any follow up information about accommodation or want these slides, as mentioned, don't hesitate to get in touch with us and we'll be happy to help. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. bye.